So my stance uh, is that uh, no, for most patients with first time and provoked seizure, we should not treat and evaluate them as if they have epilepsy. And I would outline my reasons for taking the stance. Before that, though, I would like to risk stratify those patients with significant risk factor for recurrence and those without. I'm talking about the risk factors for recurrence that were identified by the AAN guideline back in 2015. These are a prior brain insult, an epileptrome abnormality on MR on EEG, an abnormal brain imaging study, and nocturnal seizures. For those patients without any of these risk factors, I think they are unlikely to have epilepsy. And in fact, several studies have consistently shown that the risk of recurrence at five years for this group of patients is less than 30%. Studies have also looked into the benefit of initiating anti medication for these patients. And what they have found is that both in short-term and long-term seizure outcome, there is no difference between those treated early or when treatment was delayed. In fact, some estimate that for those patients without risk factors for recurrence, it would be necessary to treat 14 patients in order to prevent a single seizure recurrence within the first two years, perhaps exposing a handful of patients to unnecessary anti medication therapy. I would also argue that for a majority of patients with a significant risk factor for recurrence, waiting for a second seizure may be a better approach. First, let's look at actually the data where the AAN guideline came from. Although the study performed meta-analysis of 10 studies, the significant findings of the study was obtained from the five randomized controlled trials. Unfortunately, these studies have several limitations, including risk of bias and inadequate information regarding the timing of initiation of anti medications. As such, their conclusion that a 35% absolute risk reduction at two years with immediate anti medication should be you know, taken with a grain of salt. I think the ultimate argument against starting anti medication in this patient group is that while there is a slight reduction in seizure recurrence in the short term, this policy has no measurable impact on long-term outcome, on long-term outcome. So both the first study group and the menstrual group have found that long-term seizure remission between those treated after their index seizure and after the second seizure, long-term outcome was nearly identical. Also, it's, there is little evidence to suggest that the policy of immediate treatment brings any short-term benefit in quality of life. Besides, the first study group uh, found that immediate treatment with anti medication did not impact survival or mortality over the next 25 years. Another argument for waiting for a second seizure is that oftentimes the condition that is epilepsy will declare itself rather quickly. Several studies have shown that patients are likely to have a recurrence within the first three to six months after their index seizure. Also, it's worth remembering that in the previous clinical trials, around 50% of the patients that were not treated did not have a seizure recurrence. This implies that one half of patients that were assigned to treatment group were unnecessarily exposed to anti medication adverse effects. Yet another reason for waiting is the occurrence of seizure mimics. In some studies, the incidence of seizure mimics in those presenting with first-time seizure was over 40%. By far, the two most common mimickers are actually psychogenic seizures and convulsive syncope. Unfortunately, psychogenic seizures are quite common in our epilepsy practice, and delay in the diagnosis and treatment is quite common in this patient population. In some cases, even for decades. And this has multiple consequences, including exposing these patients to unnecessary and multiple anti medications. Lastly, I, I worry that the one seizure possibility puts a patient at risk of being prematurely diagnosed with epilepsy. We all know that the diagnosis of epilepsy carries with it all secondary handicaps, including driving restrictions, education, and insurance. 
The misdiagnosis also carries a risk of atherogenic harm. While those patients with convulsive syncope may have se severe arrhythmia if left untreated could be fatal, those with prolonged psychogenic seizures that are misattributed as staracycleptics could be exposed to unnecessary IV infusion and intubation. Really, in a majority of patients presenting with first-time seizure, we are dealing with either a provoked seizure, acute symptomatic seizure, or seizure mimics, not necessarily epilepsy. And those without risk factor for recurrence are unlikely to develop epilepsy. Also, for those patients with soft risk factors, such as incidental brain imaging abnormality or nocturnal seizure, waiting for a second seizure is reasonable because the condition, again, will declare itself rather quickly. That said, I do concede that a minority of patients with a significant risk factor for recurrence may be evaluated and treated as if they have epilepsy from the beginning. Still, it's worth noting that early treatment, even in this patient group, does not alter long-term outcome of epilepsy. I think the topic, needs, the topic of unprovoked first seizure needs more studies to help us make better informed decisions. For a start, we need better biomarkers to identify patients having epilepsy already. Second, we do need easy to apply predictive models for assessing risk of recurrence. Besides, we need to determine how long and when to discontinue anti-seizure medication once we initiate uh, for those having only one seizure. Until then, you know, given the above reasons, I would strongly favor waiting for a second seizure before declaring the diagnosis of epilepsy and initiating treatment. Certainly, for most patients with unprovoked first seizure, there is little to be lost by waiting for a seizure to recur.